another crisis at the Suez Canal. But this time, it's a rabbit fish invasion. Let's go! Oh, hey. Aha! Uh -huh. Science. Yesterday, we talked about the giant ship that's blocking the Suez Canal, causing billions of dollars lost in global trade, and how we can hope that the spring tide can push it out. Cross your fingers today. But today, we're going to be talking about a deeper problem. Just like the darkness of the Eldritch Terrors, ancient processes have been occurring over millions of years, setting the stage for current environmental problems. Today, we look at those ancient processes. You see, about 25 million years ago, when the Miocene, East Africa started to rift apart geologically, right there where the Red Sea is located today. What do I mean by rifting? Well, extensional forces have been pulling, pulling and stretching the crust until it starts to rip. The rifting causes the crust to thin out and stretch as it's being pulled and pulled, making it easier for lava to come bubbling out from the surface and creating these long rift valleys and trenches. Man, I need to get my marketing guys on this new East African rift workout system, guaranteed to make you thinner in at least 25 million years. I mean, why wouldn't that sell? Now, what's really cool about this rift system is that it's forming at 120 degree angles. It's the same thing you see in mud cracks. When things in nature try to spread apart, they like to do it in these hexagonal shapes. And that's exactly why the Horn of Africa looks like the way it does. It's basically a giant mud crack, and in the lows, it's filled up with water, and that's what the Red Sea is. And that's why the Red Sea is so long and narrow. Thinning out. Huh, who would have thought? And because the Red Sea is landlocked in an arid region, and it does have a lot of water circulation because it's trapped in this long, narrow basin. It gets a lot of salt being deposited into the ocean. And so you're getting a lot of salt. You have a lot of evaporation because it's a hot area. So the salt is getting concentrated and concentrated and concentrated and concentrated right there in the Red Sea, making one of the most saline seas in the entire world. And as you know, most life doesn't like salt. I mean... Salt straight up kills slugs and snails, and so the life that is living in the Red Sea, all the fishes and the plants and things, oh, they're pretty BAs. I mean, to be able to handle all that salt, you gotta be pretty tough. Uh, question? Who cares? Environmentalists care, and you should probably care too, because the Suez Canal connects this super saline Red Sea African rift zone filled with super powered fish and plants to the Mediterranean. The canal creates a super highway for them all to migrate up into the Mediterranean. And we all know that the Mediterranean is nice. I mean, look at the food. So basically, the animals and plants from the saline Red Sea are going up into the Mediterranean, displacing, killing, taking over the natural wildlife in the Mediterranean. It's just these exotic species coming in and taking over the whole place. And this is bad. Roughly one-fifth of the species in the Medi And this is bad because roughly one-fifth of the species found in the Mediterranean aren't found anywhere else in the world. And these species are at risk of going out due to these foreign invaders, one of which is really mean, a rabbit fish. You rascally rabbit. The rabbit fish eat brown algae. And what, it be, and what it used to be huge areas in the Mediterranean Sea covered by nutrient-rich brown algae, the rabbit fish have grazed out, leaving just barren rocks. Nobody wants to eat rocks. Why is the Suez Canal such a great superhighway for these 
attacking immigrant species. That's because the Suez Canal is approximately 200 kilometers long. And it's the longest canal in the entire world that doesn't have any locks. Usually when you build a canal, you have these differences in water level. And so you create a, a so you create what's called a lock. It's a locked area where you can raise up the water level so that the boat can move across. So you have a lower water level, it goes in the lock, you raise the water level, and now the boat can continue forward. The Suez Canal has no locks. It just is a free path. It is just a it is it is just water super freeway. And even though this big old boat is clogging up the entire canal, rabbit fish don't care. They can swim under the boat. And so while we're here stuck, we can't we can't do any sort of exports. The fish are exporting themselves to the Mediterranean and wiping out all the species there, making your future Greek vacation less biodiverse and less cool. It sucks. And so that is how 25 million years ago, the earth rifting, creating these long narrow trenches in East Africa that later on filled with water, causing the Red Sea, which due to its shape became super saline, thus making super tough organisms evolve there. And then when people came in and made a canal connecting the super tough waters to the nice, pleasant Greek vacation waters, it caused the, the super tough fishies to move in and take over the Mediterranean. It's interesting how geology 25 million years ago, then combined with human impacts of just the past couple centuries, have led to this interesting mix of an environmental problem and an environmental crisis. It makes you, it makes you wonder what other ancient factors affect our lives today and how are we going to continue to impact the earth? Well, anyway... Enough of talking about Suez Canal crises. I gotta go, like, take a long bath, you know, get to, like, uh, get a spa treatment or something to de-stress, you know? It's been stressful. Well, hope you guys do all right. And see you next time. Ciao. So salty.